So no service password encryption turns off service password encryption. That's you know pretty logical. The one thing that may seem logical that does not happen is this command does not decrypt already encrypted. In this case, we're talking about the type 7 encrypted passwords. It doesn't go through and decrypt those. So if you have encrypted passwords already in your running configuration and you turn off service password encryption, sorry to break this to you, my Snuggies, but those passwords are still going to be encrypted. And we see this here. I've got R3 and password encryption is disabled. Um, got a couple username passwords in here and they're in clear text form. They're actually showing the zero kind of cool. So now I go on and I turn on password encryption. When I do a show run to see the passwords, we'll see what we expected to see, which is that those type zero passwords have now been converted to type seven passwords. Everything's working great. So I'm like, oh man, I didn't write down what those passwords were. I don't know what they are. Um, obviously we can go out and decrypt them. We just saw that in the last few slides, but like, oh, let me go ahead and issue the no service password encryption and go ahead and check out what those are. I do that, they're still encrypted, even after I've turned this off. So with this off, actually, you can put in a, a new password. So any new passwords that you put into the configuration will not be encrypted. So we have our passwords that are encrypted already. We're not running service password encryption, but we go ahead and put a new username password in there. And then when I do a show run to see the passwords, I can see that the new one is in clear text, whereas the old ones are still type seven passwords. So keep that in mind. It's, it's a little counterintuitive. You're not gonna go into a box and just be like, oh, ho, ho, I'll get all the passwords by typing in no service password encryption. That's not gonna work. Of course, as we just saw, type seven passwords, pretty easy to break if you have access to. Let's put this sucker to bed. There's a number of different Cisco iOS features that use passwords. Either they require passwords or they allow you to use passwords to increase the security. By default, Cisco iOS stores all of these password values, except those specified as secret, that's a special case, in the configuration in clear text. This is a security issue because anybody can do an over-the-shoulder attack when these passwords are not encrypted. By enabling the service password encryption global configuration command, Cisco iOS, and I capitulated here, obfuscates all ClearTix passwords, which are type zero passwords, with a visionaire cipher and it converts them to type seven passwords. Basically that type seven password is gonna be a string of hexadecimal characters. So while type seven passwords are easily decrypted as we saw earlier, this feature greatly reduces the effectiveness of the over the shoulder attack in that it's a little bit more difficult to peep a series of hexadecimal characters and then commit that to memory. As I just mentioned, certain passwords allow you the option to designate them as secret passwords and that's a special type of beast. What it's going to do in that case is Cisco iOS is going to take the secret password and it's going to store it in the configuration in the form of an MD5 hash. While MD5 can technically be cracked, heavy emphasis on the air quotes around technically, it's not something that can be easily done. Uh, type 5 passwords are very, very secure. So not only are they secure from an over the shoulder attack, but even if you have them trying to reverse engineer the MD5 hash, is going to be nearly impossible. I, again, technically it can be done, but it's just not viable. And finally, you could tell quickly by looking at a configuration whether a password is stored in clear text because it'll be a type zero password, uh, MD5 hash type five, or the Visionaire cipher, which is type seven. You can do that by just looking at the number that precedes the password when viewing the configuration. I keep that in mind because that seems like fertile ground from which Cisco could pull an exam question. All right, well, that's gonna wrap this up. I hope to see you over on the CLI for the lab portion of this lesson.